It's another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, episode 550, and I'm Dr. Neil, your host of the show. Welcome back to another Friday Q&A show where I play your questions and simply answer them. On all the other days, I read health and fitness blogs to you like an audiobook, with permission from the authors, of course. Now, as a reminder, if you've sent me a question and I haven't answered it yet, be sure to stay tuned for something I'm putting together. I'm going to do a Q&A speed round. Now, what I mean by that is, Some questions I get asked can be answered really, really quickly. Others, there may not be a whole lot of scientific research to support an answer. So what I'll do is I'll end up answering a bunch of your questions within one episode. They'll just be shorter answers than what you're used to. So again, if you haven't heard an answer to your question yet, chances are it's gonna show up in the Q&A speed round and I'll give you an exact date on when that's happening soon. So stay tuned for that. And at the end of the show, I'll remind you how you can send in your own question. And you should do that soon, by the way, because you'll be in a special raffle next week. Can't believe it's already the end of the month already. So for now, let's hear today's question and start optimizing your life. Hi, Dr. Neil. I'm curious about kombucha. Um, What are your thoughts on the health benefits of it? Drinking uh, kombucha, making your own kombucha, purchasing kombucha from the store. What exactly is it and what are the benefits of drinking it? Thanks. Thank you for your question, Christina. It's been a while since I've discussed kombucha on this podcast, so I think it's a great time to revisit this topic. What's interesting about kombucha is that it's often referred to as kombucha mushroom or Manchurian mushroom. This is ironic because the word kombucha translates to tea made from kombu seaweed. What's even more ironic is that kombucha is not made from mushrooms or seaweed. It's actually made by combining black tea, some sugar, and yeast, combining those together, and then letting it sit for about a week or so. By the end of that week, the hope is you end up with this blob of gelatinous goo. Now, why those ingredients and why let it sit until it forms this not-so-appetizing gelatinous goo? Well, by combining these ingredients and then letting it sit, It allows it to grow fungi and bacteria, which is basically what the gelatinous blob is made of. I realize consuming bacteria doesn't really sound all that appetizing, but these are supposed to be beneficial bacteria, bacteria that will actually promote health, not harm it. Now, this process is creating a fermented food. That's basically what's happening. If you've ever had yogurt, sourdough bread, kimchi, or sauerkraut, you've consumed a food that has gone through a similar fermentation process. So. After a week of letting this mixture sit and form its gelatin-like blob, you drink it. And again, by doing so, you're hoping to consume those beneficial bacteria found in that gelatinous blob. Now, supposedly, kombucha tea has been around for at least 2,000 years. It was believed that drinking it would cure a number of illnesses. But actual scientific analysis of these claims didn't start happening until the 1930s. Today, some claim that kombucha tea improves digestion, boosts immunity, lowers blood sugar, lowers cholesterol levels, and lots more. Unfortunately, human studies have not found this to be true. Part of the problem is each kombucha tea contains different organisms. So how can we possibly get an accurate picture of what's going on when we don't really know what we're comparing? Because of this, we really can't say how much kombucha tea we should consume. We don't have a safe dosage. So my perspective is always this. If it's not causing harm, then don't stress about it. So then the question is, does it cause harm? There have been reported cases of illness like liver problems and allergic reactions, and there is one reported death. How could this happen? How is it possible? Well, here are some potential problems with kombucha tea. Let's say you were to make a homemade version the type of bacteria and fungi that you'll end up with in your version of the tea is really dependent on what bacteria and fungi are lying around your kitchen. There may be good bacteria, there may be good fungi in your kitchen, or not so good. So when drinking store-bought kombucha tea, the same rule applies. Are they making this stuff in a fairly clean environment, or are they a little loose with their hygiene? So I'm basically saying that the type of kombucha tea you end up with is really a product of the environment in which you grow it. You also need to be careful about where you store your kombucha tea. There have been reported cases of lead poisoning because folks stored their tea in a ceramic pot, which contained a lead-based glaze. 
glass is usually the safest vessel to grow and store kombucha tea. So the bottom line is this. Kombucha tea is probably not going to provide many health benefits, if any at all. But if it's not harming you, enjoy it. Just be sure to monitor how you feel after consuming it. To lower your risk for any unintentional side effects, if you're consuming store-bought kombucha tea, be sure it's a reputable company. It may not be a bad idea, actually, to do a little bit of research to find out what the company does to ensure the safety of its product. If you're making it at home, be sure your kitchen is clean. Thank you again for the question, Christina. You'll be entered into a very small raffle every month to win a book, and the next raffle is next week. So if you want to be in the raffle, send me a question. Just come by oldpodcast.com. Look for the section where you can send in your audio question, or you can do it the old-fashioned way and call in your question. The number is 61 I love ohd Both methods are in this episode's description, which you can find at oldpodcast.com. All right, that'll do it for this week. I hope you had a wonderful week. Thank you for listening every day. Thank you for being a subscriber. Thank you for sharing the show with someone. Have a wonderful weekend, and I'll be back here on Monday where your optimal life awaits.